Have you ever wondered why you get so emotional and worked up that you keep going on and on about certain things? Would you ever find someone in your team is bringing emotions into the boardroom, into the meeting, and they just seem to get be stuck on it? Why are we so emotional? Let's explore this a bit in today's episode of Let's Talk Courageous Communication with me, Courage Coach Talana Simpson. Welcome to Let's Talk Courageous Communication with me, Talana Simpson. Today I'd like to share an article I wrote quite a few years ago, but I just thought of it recently because it's related to emotions, how that affects our ability to communicate and also to be really listened to, and what they actually mean in business in particular. So I hope you can enjoy this as I read out my article to you. It's called, Why So Emotional? We know that, you've said it before, was the response I got when I was sharing my emotions with the team around an issue to do with the long-term project I've been working on. The interruption stopped my train of thought and instead of moving from expressing the emotion I had to next to the underlying issue, I found that I had rather to deal with the interruption now. The next day after the meeting, as I was reflecting on the decisions we had made as a team, I realized that my initial issue had still not been addressed and all we had done was put a band-aid on the problem. I felt even more frustrated and knew that we'd have to have another discussion in the near future to find a solution. So what happened that the purpose of the first meeting was not met and the issue was not resolved? Emotion. So do emotions have a place in the boardroom at all? Was the person who interrupted me so uncomfortable with other people's emotions that he would just brush them away and so miss their message? Was I not expressing my emotion in a way where I owned it and shared it respectfully? and in a controlled manner, so that it opens up dialogue instead of closing it? Do the emotions have no place in this team sitting around the table? Do emotions have no place in a business at all? What are emotions? Emotions are the most useful things, and at the same time, they are just emotions. They are signs that help us navigate our way through life, and we experience them as energy that is in motion, as an E-dash motion, in our body. Our own emotions signal to us that there is a difference between our expectations of a situation or person and the reality of that situation or the facts of how that person is behaving or believing. Emotions of other people give us a clue about how they perceive the situation and what their expectations are. They are all useful, and I mean all emotions, the negative and the positive ones. Applying this to my meeting, I wonder if the outcome would have been different if the other person had let me finish, if he had not only heard me as I expressed my emotions, but also listened to me. When someone appears emotional, and especially if they are repeating themselves, it might be a sign that they have not felt heard and understood yet. That, or they have not yet uncovered for themselves the underlying issue behind the emotion, and hence feel the need to keep talking about the emotion. A key part of developing our emotional intelligence is to be okay with other people's emotions, with them having them and with them expressing them. When we just allow the person to express themselves and we go beyond hearing to really listening to what they are saying, even asking what is behind their emotional expression, we will gain valuable information. And that information will help us to not only resolve the issue, but also to build the relationship through the uncomfortable and difficult moment of confrontation or conflict. 
Another key aspect of emotional intelligence is our own expression of our own emotions. When we can own them as ours, and not something someone else made us feel, we can express them in a way where we do not come across as accusatory and put the other person in the defensive, feeling that they need to explain or protect themselves. There is a way to share emotions using language like, I feel hurt when you dot, 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 rather than you hurt me. The former shares useful information that can improve the relationship and take it forward. And there are often physical signs of emotions that go with their expression, like tears, skin color changes, the raising of voices, gestures, etc. The degree to which these are present gives us information about the degree of importance about what we are talking about. And so the amount of focus we need to give to that issue. What about a team's emotions? Well, the degree of emotional intelligence of the people in a team sitting around the table will determine the degree to which emotions will be used for the higher good of all and how they will be used to assist the team in moving through a conflict issue with all its emotions more quickly and more effectively. A starting point is that each person has permission from the team and from themselves to own and express their emotions respectfully. That means that it is okay to have emotions and express them with the team and the guidelines are just in how we express the emotions to take into account the time constraints, the context and the respect for self and others. I believe that those boardrooms that allow emotions into them and encourage their healthy expression around the boardroom table will be the teams that not only excel at their tasks and achieve their purposes, but will also create healthy and strong individuals who will become role models and leaders in their community. Will you be one of those leaders? Will you foster the emotional intelligence of yourself and of your team so that you can create the change that you want to and build a team that is effective and achieving what you need to? Do let me know how you are finding the emotional intelligence of your team. I would love to hear some stories and comments and if you too have found a similar situation in a team where things are not progressing because emotions are being dismissed and um, not allowed to be in the room, in the discussion. It's a big part of courageous communication is having the courage to own our emotions and know when and how to express them so that we can get the most out of the situation. For more articles like this, you're welcome to look at my website, innercoaching.co.za. And I look forward to sharing with you some more courageous conversations with my future guests on my show. And until then, you can subscribe to the channel, just look up Let's Talk Courageous Communication or go to the website innercoaching.co.za forward slash talk communication and I will see you around. Until then, be brave and be you. Thank you for listening.